What's up guys, Aaron Benzing here for another video and today I'm going to be using my grappling smarty because I'm over here watching UFC 269 and I was really excited about a fight with Andre Muniz versus Eric Anders because Andre Muniz was actually the one who submitted Jacare with an arm bar and he broke his arm. And a lot of people were calling it a fluke and I wanted to see how he would perform in this next fight because I'm a huge fan of his and he did the exact same arm bar. Well, not the exact same but very, very close and so I watched it and unfortunately I don't have too much replay. But I saw his last one, and I was quick enough to get a really good look at how he did it against Eric Anders. That was literally tonight, right now. I just watched it like two minutes ago. So I'm going to use my grappling smarty to break it down for you guys, because I really don't need anything more than my dummy. This thing is amazing, by the way, and this is why I love having it, because events like this. I'm watching UFC. I want to drill. I started drilling it right away. Anyways, I have a code for these in my description if you want to get 5% off. I'm the only one with a code. So what happened was, and I'm not going to break down everything because I'm, my capabilities are a little bit limited with the gummy. But basically, um, Mooney's took Eric Anders' back, right? So he has back, much like he did with Jacare. And he used that like famous trip to take his back. And when he was on the back, um, he was able to underhook the leg to start attacking this arm. It was his right arm, I believe. So the, the main detail here is that when he started to attack his arm, is that he was able to get like an overhook on the arm. That is a pivotal detail, and there's a couple little finishing things that I noticed that he did that are absolutely incredible, and it's a super legit move. Obviously, it's being executed at the highest level. So he's on the back, right? He's controlling the back, and he's able to come through as he kind of starts to lean to the side and get his arm over his opponent's arm, okay? And as he gets his, his arm over his opponent's arm, he's going to underhook this leg here. So if we turn... So he's going to underhook. He was even grabbing the shin at one point. Now, with this ability to underhook this leg while I maintain the overhook on the arm, I'm going to have tons of breaking power. Okay, as he did this, his opponent was kind of starting to scramble and try to sit up. I can't execute it perfectly because of the dummy, but he ended up in an inverted position where his leg was over the head. And I'm going to show you guys different ways to apply this arm lock. So his leg was over the head, and he was inverted like this. Okay, so he was completely inverted for a second. Now, from this inversion, I'm going to show you guys different ways you can finish this. He, uh, he was able to flatten out his opponent and start to get the break on the arm. And he, it's very important to note that he abandons the underhook on the leg. He gets into the breaking position that he is obviously strongest from, and he starts to use his legs to push his opponent away. As he pushes his opponent away, he moves himself so that he's belly down. And as he goes belly down, he abandons his grip on the leg, and he goes for the full overhook. Now, it was a very interesting detail that he brought his opposite hand in to make a wrist-to-wrist -wrist connection. He didn't go palm-to-palm, -palm, he didn't go gable, he went wrist-to-wrist, -wrist, or almost forearm-to-forearm. -forearm. So if you guys can see this grip here, I'm not sure if you're able to see, we'll try to get the camera. It was a grip like this, much like if you're going for an ankle lock or a heel hook. And as he started to get this grip, he started to hip down into the arm and lift his body off the mat. Right now, I'm applying tremendous breaking pressure to my dummy. It would almost be difficult to drill this with an opponent because it's such a tight arm lock. But as you can see, if I step off, you're going to see my opponent's, uh, my dummy's arm is completely broken. Okay, because since I have this overhook and since I'm in this breaking position, my hips are the driving force on the elbow. And as my hips bow down and my face lifts off of the mat because of my core strength, and my overhook, I'm applying all that pressure on the arm, but not only the arm, the shoulder, right? So I'm here, okay, I dive for the arm, I get the underhook on the leg, all right? I start to get into this inverted position, my leg comes over, and then I start to abandon the underhook on the leg and focus solely on the arm, and then I start to go quickly down, 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 and now I'm breaking right now. At this point, I'm completely breaking. And you can see if I come up, that all that force is taking the arm this way. Okay? Now, this is just the way that Mooney's is applying this. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. There's other ways to apply this, right? If you get this overhook position and you don't want to go straight into an invert, you can just bring your knee over your opponent and you can start to go for the same arm lock with just having your knee here. If you maintain the underhook and you bring your knee here and you want to start to invert, you can start to flower sweep which I actually do this a lot from a different position. You could start to pendulum or flower sweep, whatever you want to call it. This way, lifting your opponent, 
like so. It's very easy and this dummy's heavy. And bringing your leg over here, and I still have that same overhook grip. Okay, and then I can switch for that wrist to wrist grip that we saw him get, pinch the knees, start to fall back, and I can apply the pressure. This one isn't as strong as a breaking position because my hips can only go so far, so hard, right? When I'm going belly down, I can drive all my hips into it. So here, a lot more of the breaking mechanics come from how much I'm able to heist my wrist to wrist, forearm to forearm grip, right? Whereas if we were to go back in time and I was gonna go, so let's go this way. In this finishing position, much stronger. So again, it's very similar to a traditional arm lock from the turtle, where we bring our knee over, we come here and underhook the leg. But the main detail that changes significantly is when you're able to attach his arm to his own leg, like so. And then from this position, if you want, right, you can start to invert, come through, come here, and we have his arm right here. So there's a lot you guys can do from here, but man, I am so impressed with that guy. The fact that he broke Jacare's arm, one of the best BJJ practitioners to ever live to this day, and the fact that he was able to replicate that exact position and do it again in tonight's fight, if you're watching this later on, on our time, <laughs> it's UFC 269. I don't even know today's date, but it's UFC 269 and this is all happening. But man, it's freaking amazing, and I'm really happy I was able to see that. I'm a sucker for beautiful jiu-jitsu. That is beautiful jiu-jitsu. If you're not already subscribed and you like these breakdowns, subscribe. Drop a comment if you want me to do more breakdowns. And also, thank you so much for everything, guys. Have a good one.